Good evening. Welcome to Calvary Chapel of Grace and Truth. Can we all get to our seats? Let's get ready to worship our Lord and Savior. Amen. a God, an awesome God, a mighty God. Man makes promises and he breaks them. But God makes promises and he keeps them. He's faithful. He's so faithful. i 
Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come. Say 
gratitude, Lord God, to all that you do in and through us, Lord God, collectively as a church, Lord God. And Lord God, what you're doing in and through our lives individually, Lord God. We thank you for the life that you've given us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you just for all that you do. Lord God, may we, may we never stray away from our first love, Lord God. May we praise your name, Lord God, all the days of our lives, Lord God, until we're home with you in paradise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Let's repeat that first verse again. You give life. You give life. You are love. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You give hope. You shipping him all the earth all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Rain are you Lord lift your voices all the earth all the earth will shout your praise Your breath 
Father, we do thank you for this time, Lord God. We thank you for the gathering of the saints, Lord God. Thank you for getting us here safely, Lord God, even in this weather. Lord, we pray, Lord God, to get us home safely as well, Lord God. Thank you for everyone who's here, Lord God. Despite whatever they may be going through in their week, Heavenly Father, they've chosen to come to your house, Lord God, and hear your word, Heavenly Father. So we look to you, Lord God, for all our sustenance, Lord God. You are our substance, Lord God, you are everything to us, Heavenly Father. So we thank you and we pray this in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. Children, you can be dismissed to your classes. <laughs> Guys, take a second and say hi to someone right next to you. All right, say hi. Wave. Give a hug. We'll give you guys a second to settle down. <clears throat> Good to see you guys coming out. Right. Listen, I gotta, I gotta make a confession. All right, that second song, promises, it's probably my new favorite. All right, just listening to it, the way it was sung, um, Lord willing, the uh, worship team, you guys can sing that every service on Sundays. I'm just saying, that's just me. I'm just, I'm only kidding, but I, I do love the song. Welcome to Calvary Chapel of Grace and Truth, and welcome to all of you listening online as well. This week at Calvary, joining Pastor Johnny this Sunday, April 21st, we have a special guest speaker, Pastor Jonathan Domingo of Far Reaching Ministries. You don't want to miss this, so be sure to come out and join us at any one of our three Sunday morning services. Upcoming events here at Calvary. Guys, begin registering for Anchored Men's Ministry. Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's $10 per person, open to all young men, 16 and up. Also, guys, don't forget to register for the men's conference at Calvary Chapel Hudson Valley, Friday to Saturday, May 3rd and 4th, open to all young men 13 and up. And you can register online at ccohv.org. So as you can tell, Pastor Johnny is off tonight. Yet we do have a very special guest speaker filling in, our very own Pastor Dave Barreto. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Pastor David. Sorry. Hello. Oh, can you hear me? There you go. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out. Um, just bear with me. I'm still new at this, you know. Um, let me set my timer right. Okay. Let's, let me let's start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the time is here, Lord God. The moment is now, Lord God. I just pray that you will use me, Lord. I'm just a vessel, Lord God. And I pray that you will just pour into me now, that I'm able to pour out, Lord God, the message that I feel that you placed upon my heart, that they would understand it the way you ministered it to me, oh Lord God. May everyone here just be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we would just hear what your word has to say to us tonight. And you just pray, I just pray, we just pray, <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today I'll be doing a topical in the book of James. A little background on the book of James. A uh, little quick, short background on James. This is more than one James in the Bible, so I want to make sure we know who I'm talking about. The book of James teaches us to continue to grow in our Christian faith, that our actions will naturally flow from those filled with the Spirit. James is known as James the Just. In the book of James, uh, James challenges us to be uh, followers of Jesus Christ, not just to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. James is also known as a great man of prayer. In fact, he was called O Camel Knees because he spent so much time on his knees. That's the legend, right? He's always been on his knees, so he had calluses on his knees. His knees were stiff from doing a lot of praying. James, half brother Jesus Christ who amazingly he wasn't a follower of Jesus Christ until after the resurrection, right? Amazing, right? All the stuff that Jesus did, but he had his own brother right there, and his brother, see, that, that goes to show, right? 
everybody can change, and sometimes we take a little more convincing. But this is the James that wrote this epistle. Not James, the brother of John, but this James. The title of the message is um, Don't Curse. And I'll be reading from James verses 8 through 10. But I'm going to be focused on verse 10. So James chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. I mean, yeah, it's today. It says, But no man tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless God our Father, and with it we curse men. We have been made in the similitude, which is the likeness of God, out of the same mouth, blessings, perceive blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things not ought to be so. I like the way the J.B. Phillips translation, I'm going to read it one more time, but in a different translation. I'm going to be using different translations because some of them I like the way they flow. Um, it says, we use the same tongue to curse our fellow man, who are all created in God's likeness. Blessings and curses come out the same mouth. Surely, my brothers... This sort of thing should have never happened. Let me pray one more time. Father God, we thank you once again for your word, O oh Lord God. Your word is the truth, O oh Lord God, and um, allow me to push that truth forward, O oh Lord God. Let it not only convict me and change me and transform me, but anyone here, O oh Lord God. For those here and for those at home, O oh Lord God, I pray that they will get it, O oh Lord God. They will hear what your word has to say to them tonight. And we just pray now once again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. You know, not, not too long ago, maybe like, I don't know, maybe a month, maybe two months ago, I took a road trip. And anybody who ever took a road trip understands, know how it is. This is maybe 11 and a half hour road trip. And now when you're taking a road trip, what you want to do, you want to stay alive. So you want to do anything you can to keep yourself awake. You, you, you play games, sometimes you count license plates, and look how many blue cars, how many red cars. And you find anything to keep yourself occupied. You eat snacks, but then you can eat but so much snacks, your stomach's going to hurt. There's no rest stops. Or, or you sit there and you talk to somebody, and you know, you, you said eventually you notice they, they fall asleep, right? They, they don't stay awake. So now you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. You're like, oh, man, what I got to do? Because, you know, you got your life in their hands. So you, what you do, you listen to music. I listen to, when, when I'm driving this particular night, I'm driving, and I'm like listening to the Bible. That's cool. And so then I'm listening to you know, Christian music, gospel music, um, 70s music, 80s music, R&B. No country, though. No disrespect to you people who like country, but I just don't have it on my playlist. But then, it, then, I, then I get into rap. See, I like, I like hip-hop, but they, not the stuff from now. I don't know what they call that now. It's not hip-hop. It's not rap. It's the stuff from the 80s and 90s. So, so, all right, there was a song that came out July 2nd, 1991. There was a cool song that came out by a popular artist at the time. Now, artist, he, what he did, he took six other artists that was famous at the time and popular, and what he did, he made, he made a song, and he challenged them. He says... And he says, you can say whatever you want to say on the record, but just do, just do one thing, don't curse. He told him, don't curse. And in, in the beginning of the song goes like this, right? He says, it says, we're going to teach people out there what we can say, what they want to say, but the right way. Now, my thing is like, what is the right way, right? He said, he told him, he said, we're going to teach people to say things the right way. How many of us say the things the right way? How many of us go about saying what we should say, all right? I know in my past, I could have been a sailor. You know how they say people, you say you cross like a sailor? That was me. I mean, if I, I was the chief of sailors, I was Popeye. You know, if, if I had to say, I was like, oh, or people, you know, maybe Gilligan. I don't know too many sailor names, but I was Gilligan. Or I was, he was a skip, no, he was a skipper. I don't know. But either way, I was like the, I was the chief. I was like Popeye. I would, every word that came out of my mouth was a bad word. And I like to do it. I just felt like I needed to do it to get the attention to come across. And it's a shame, right, because sometimes you feel like you have to raise your voice and you have to say something to get people's attention. It's a shame it shouldn't be that way. You should be able to speak to somebody and receive their attention. But not, nowadays, it seems like you like that. But that's what I did. I would go and I would say something and just to see, basically, sometimes just to see their reaction. Just say some words and make up some little four-letter words or whatever words, five letters, whatever it is. And it wasn't right, but that's what I did. Thank God I don't have any problem doing that now. But I'll tell you one thing. I cringe when I hear people do it now. And not judging anybody, God knows I'm not. But it, I cringe now. When I hear people using certain language, I'm like, oh, man, it bothers me. It's like I'm not a smoker, never been, right? Thank God. But I can't be around smoke. Not disrespecting anybody who smokes. Listen, you do what you got to do. But I'm just saying, you know how if, you can't, if you're not a smoker, you can't be around smoke. It bothers you. 
being around people now when they use this language, it just bothers me. It just kind of turns me off. But, you know, I pray for them. It is what it is. But nowadays, I cringe when I hate these kids now. I know you must have heard it. They have these kids, I mean kids, using languages, using words I have never would have said, said back then. I don't know how they do it. And then I'll look at the parent, waiting to see if the parent's going to lay the smack down on them. And guess what? The parent is cursing my back. They're having like a conversation, and everything is like a bad word. Man, listen. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but um, it's not good. I have to preface saying that the message is called don't curse. Now, I'm using curse in the context of two things. I'm looking at it in two ways. I'm looking at it as a bad word. You know, somebody can curse you out and say bad words to you. I'm looking at it that way. But I'm also looking at the curse like somebody can curse you, like, hey, I hope you fall down and break your neck, or I hope you crash into a tree. So I'm using both of those in context. When I say don't curse, that's what I mean, both. You shouldn't do any of those. None of them are good. So that's what I'm referring to, don't curse. Let's go back up. So back up to the verse, right? What it says, remember, I'm focusing on the last verse. It says, out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Now, now let's, let's look at it. What's the dictionary? What is blessed, right? Blessed says to pronounce a wish of happiness to one another, to express happiness. It's like bless you, you know. Blessings involve both giving and receiving. You can bless somebody, you can receive a blessing, right? Blessing others was a vital part in biblical times. To bless others meant like to praise them, to pray for them, uh, to commit to God's care. Not curse, right? The 1612 Noah Webster says, a curse is the word intended to bring about a negative result. To utter a wish of evil upon someone. To call mischief or injury to fall on somebody. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of this country for your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make you a great name. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will will curse those who curse you. And then all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Notice that, right? He said, I. It's not what Abram did. It's nothing that we do. People go around and say, oh, I'm blessed. Oh, look, look at my car, I'm blessed. Look at the money in my pocket, I'm blessed. Look at the girl, mom, I'm blessed. That's not a blessing. That's deception. It says here, right, Abram, we know who Abraham, right? Abram became Abraham, right? You know, he had so much, right? I. I will bless, I will show you, I will make, I will curse. It's God. This is God. Genesis 17, verses 6 through 8, it says, I, again, will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make a nations of you, and kings shall come from you. Now, we know from the tribe of um, Abraham, from the line, right, came Jesus, right? The ultimate high priest, right? And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants and after you in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, everlasting covenant, remember that, to be your God and to be your descendants after you. And I will give you, I will give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now, I got to do this. I said I wasn't going to do it, but you know, now I, now I know, kind of know how Johnny feels. Sometimes there's something here. You got to say it. I got to say it. Check this out. All the land of Canaan. Canaan is Israel. Everlasting possession. Forever. And I will be their God. This is Genesis in the Bible in the very beginning. There's things going on in the Middle East and we know this. I'm not going to go that far with it. I'm just saying there's things going on now. People fighting over land. People fighting over property. God gave this land to Israel. This Israel belongs to Abraham. Belongs to Israel. It belongs to them. Has the everlasting covenant, everlasting, they made everlasting covenants, everlasting possession. He will be their God. They're fighting foolishly right now. We, 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 we must pray for them. We must pray for them. Blessings was found in obedience. Deuteronomy 11, 26 to 28. It says, Behold, I said before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey my commandments, be obey the the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside from the way which I have commanded you today to go after other gods which you have not known. 
there's consequences to sin, right? I'm telling you, I'm going to give you blessings. I'm going to give you this. Follow me. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm going to give you this. But if you don't listen, when this comes, what are you going to do? I hear people say it all the time. If God is a God of love, if God is this, why does he do this thing? Why does, why does he do what? There's blessings and consequences. There was from the beginning of the Bible to this day. There's consequences for your sin, for what you do. It hasn't changed. God is a just God. He's not going to turn his back because he likes you or doesn't like you. The rain falls on the just and the unjust, right? Amen. He's not going to turn his back because he, if he did, he's not a just God. We're talking about blessed. So who, who are the blessed? The psalm contained many of blessings. I'm going to run through them real quick. I have a lot of verses. Bear with me. Psalm 1.1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, but stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Psalms 32, 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalm 44, 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trudge and does not respect the proud, nor is turn aside to lies. Psalm 41, 1. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Psalm 128, 1. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Not your way, his way. Then you'll be blessed. Psalm 119, verses 1 through 2. Blessed are the undefiled in their way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with his whole heart. With the whole heart. No matter how we may be treated, we ought to respond in a positive way and to seek to introduce others to Christ. God's blessing comes to us in, in all our circumstances and makes us fortunate no matter how others may view our lives. People may see you and they think you're, because like I said, you got that man who got that nice car, who got this, and he may look down on you because he thinks he's blessed and you're not. Nah, nah, nah. Blessing no matter what your circumstances are, you're blessed. Amen. And I'm going to try to get into how you're blessed. And I'm going to try to mention these things. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to just show you little blessings and curses. Now, curse. Let's talk about curse, right? A curse made God's people aware ahead of time of the judgment that will follow should they break their covenant. We see this in Deuteronomy 29, 14 to 21. We see this in Isaiah 24, verse 6. Jeremiah 23, 10. Again, in Daniel 9, 11. Deuteronomy 28, 20. It says, The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed, and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. The wickedness of the doings, right? Of your doings. It's what you do. Don't blame God. In the book of Numbers, we see an example of this, right? We got, we got Balaam, right? We know the story of Balaam. I'm going to run through Balaam really quick. If you want to know more about Balaam, like Johnny always says, hey, go into our archives. Book of Numbers, he did a wonderful job, verse by verse, he goes through it. Now we got Balak. Balak was the king, king of Moab. He was scared. He was scared of the Jews. He saw so many and he was terrified. He hired, he wanted to hire Balaam. Who was Balaam? A prophet seeking prophet. That's what he was, a prophet seeking prophet. He was a prophet. He was one all about that money. We got those false prophets today. We got people like that today. It's all about themselves, it's all about that money. He sent him, he wanted to have him to, to go curse Israel. But see, now in Numbers twenty two twelve, 12, Balaam told him, he said, you must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. Now, Balaam sounds like a good guy. He's telling him, you can't curse them, they're good people. You know, God got them. Numbers 28, 23, verse 8. He says, how shall I, how should I curse whom God has not cursed? And how should I denounce whom God has not denounced? Right? Sounds like a good man, right? But we know his story. Balak was frustrated at Balaam's inability to curse Israel. He was mad. He tried. He gave him office. Numbers 24.10 tells us that Balak's anger was aroused at Balaam, and he struck his hands together, and Balak said to Balaam, I call to you to curse my enemies, and look, you have bountifully blessed them three times. Now Balaam went on to bless Israel four more times, a total of seven. Deuteronomy 23, 5 says, Nevertheless, the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing because of you and because the Lord God loves you. And I got to say, listen, when I was started reading the Bible, I used to like, man, the Old Testament, I'm like, hmm, ah, the circumcision, all that weird stuff going on. 
I, I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't understand it. It was hard. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's hard for me to get it. But I got to remind myself. I remember when the two disciples were walking on the mayor's road, right? And Jesus came with them. They didn't know it was Jesus at the time. And they said he spoke to them, and their hearts were burning inside. And when Jesus was speaking to them, he gave them the whole counsel of God. He went from the beginning to the end. So he went from the Old Testament to the New, right? Basically, he is the New Testament, but he went from there to there. So I can't leave that part out, because Jesus is in God, Jesus, right? He's in Genesis, and he's already through Revelation. You don't open up a book toward the middle or, and then re- or read the end. You start from the beginning to get context. So just hang with it. I know sometimes that's why I'm using the Old Testament here. You know, you got to... It got, you got to start from somewhere. Romans 8, 28, right? It says, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Right? Now I say that because, now Balaam goes on to say, and, and to, see, now this is Balaam with the donkey. See, if you know the story, of, he was on a donkey and the donkey spoke, right? But Balaam goes on to say, and Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeases you, I'll turn back. He's lying. He's lying. I mean, let's, 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 come on, let's look at it. All right, so the donkey talks. It's, okay. Next thing you know, then, then, then his eyes are open, and he sees the angel of the Lord, right? If, he, if, he, if it displeases you, I'll turn back. He knew he wasn't supposed to go. Saying we're like us. We know we're not supposed to do something. We do it anyway. Who are we fooling? Who are we lying to each other? Because God knows. See, now, if you read in the chapter, you're like, wait a minute. God told him to go. But see, you have to, see, you have to slow it down. See, now, God told him not to go. He wasn't supposed to go. But he was over there trying to make deals to see how much he can get or what he can get. So God knew. So God was like, all right, you go. But do not curse them. So God said, so God will give you over to your desires. You want to do bad? Okay. He put that conviction out. You want to go? Go ahead. He did it to Pharaoh, right? He hardened Pharaoh's heart because Pharaoh already had in his heart that he wasn't going to let the, the, the Israelites go. He gives you overseas desire. And that's what he did. He said, all right, go ahead, you go. See, all right, back to Romans 20. He calls those, it says, those who are called according to his purpose. Balaam was not doing his purpose. Balaam was doing what he wanted to do. Balak had moved him to three different positions on the mountaintop. He said, go over here and curse him. Go over here and curse him. Go over here and curse him. In hope that, you know, Balaam would curse him. But you know what? The Lord opened up Balaam's eyes, right? It tells us in 23, verse Numbers 23, 9, right? It says, from the top of the mountains, from the top of the rocks, I see him. Speaking of God. From the top of the rocks, I see him. And from the hills, I behold him. There are people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Right? Now, if you remember, like Johnny taught this, you remember. So now he's on top of the mountain. If you have to remember, you go back, if you read it, the camps, the way the camps were set up, is the 12 tribes, right? You had the, you know, the tribe of Daniel, right? You had, the, you had all these tribes. And the way they were set up, they were, they were, they were coming down this way, tabernacle and the building, they were lined up this way. So they formed the cross. So when he's up there, he sees all these people. And he's, all there, he's high up on the mountain, he sees a cross. He sees like, wow. He's blown away, right? He looks, he looks down and he sees the people. They forms a cross. See, our eyes and hearts are open when we accept Jesus in our life, right? What's our excuse, right? Balaam looked down and saw the cross, right? We look up to Jesus who died on that cross, right? Our blessings come from what he did on that cross. The outcome of Balaam is that he died a terrible death. He tried to play both sides of the fence, and I know you want people like that, right? Sometimes you want to be a little bit in and a little bit out. We do the same, right? Like Balak, sometimes, you know, we move around. Place to place, right? We go to, we go to work, we go to home, we go to church. We get in our cars, we get on the train, we get in the buses. But guess what? God is still there. David, right, speaking in Psalms 139, 7 and 8. I love this psalm. He says, where can I go from your presence? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you were there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. The curse was to do evil. The, the curse was to do evil or harm upon somebody. But God's covenant promise to Israel through Abraham was to lavish blessings upon him. And the same thing between for you and me. See, now when we look at the Old Testament, we're like, that refers to them, not to us. Yes, it refers to us. 
There's, we're in there too. The story of Balaam shows us that no one could successfully curse God. Because God has chosen to bless, right? Anyone who curses the Lord, the Lord will curse, right? The Bible says God turns curses into blessings because of his love for his people. And we are his people. God's promise to turn curses into blessings is fulfilled. It's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3, verses 13 and 14. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, in Christ Jesus, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through, through faith. See, after the fall of Adam and Eve, divine curses came into effect upon God's creation. Genesis 3, verses 14 through 19. These curses were consequences of human disobedience. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 19. But through the redeeming sacrifice of Jesus Christ on that cross, the curse of humanity's fall is reversed. You can read about it in Acts 3, 25 to 26, Galatians 3, 29. If disobedience brings curses, obedience to the Lord brings his blessings. Deuteronomy 11, 26, 28. I read it earlier. Believers are called to do what? Jesus speaking in, in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28, he says, But I say to you who hear, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. Other translation says, pray for those who mistreat you. How many times have we been mistreated by someone? The Lord is telling, this is red letters. Now, you know in the Bible, you see the red letters, you know. They said, this is the letters that Jesus said. This is it's telling, you can't get any better than that. You're hearing it from, like they said, a horse's mouth. You're hearing it from Jesus, right? How can we turn curses into blessings? Romans 12, 14, right? It says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. The apostle Paul testified, when we are cursed, we bless. And when we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slander, we answer kindly. 1 Corinthians 4, verses 12 to 13. Jesus speaking. Luke 6, verse 22. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, when they revile you, when they cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Ephesians 4.29 Don't use foul and abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words be an encouragement to those who hear them. I heard it said the more a person says the greater chances of him offending someone. Proverbs 10.19, right? It says in a multitude of words sin is not lacking but he who restrains his lips is wise. I like that same verse. That same verse in the NLT, I like it. It says, Proverbs 10, 19. It says, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible, keep your mouth shut. I like that. Simple, right? Keep your mouth shut. Proverbs 18, 21. It says, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Colossians 4, 6. I like this translation. I like, this is cool, cool. It says, be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring the best out of others in your conversation, not to put them down, not to cut them out. Once again, Jesus speaking, right? In Matthew 5, 44 to 46. He said, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who, who curse you and do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun shine, make the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rains on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Got a quote from Warren Risby. It says it's easy to practice brotherly love because brothers and sisters belong to the same family and share the same heritage. But Christian love doesn't mean we love because of likenesses, it means we love in spite of our differences. 
A decision to follow Jesus will result in receiving his blessing. You see, we already have his blessings. But what are we going to do with it? Be mindful with your behavior as well as your words. You are God's people. He wants you to share the truth for the gospel boldly and without fear. Ask God to give you the courage that your light may shine. So others may see Christ in you. and You may be light in the world. That's what he calls us to be, right? I ain't want to get into a bunch of verses, but you know, be light of the world, right? Jesus speaking to Peter, right? In Matthew 15, 18 through 20, he says, But the words you speak come from the heart. That what, that's what defies you. From the heart comes evil thoughts and murder, or adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. Charles Burgess went on and said, he says, he who is not ashamed to curse God will be sure to lie unto men. If you have no problem, listen, you can lie to God because you're going to say anything to your brother and sister. I like this quote from um, Tony Evans, right? He says, if criticizing, gossiping, and swearing come out of your mouth, the content of your heart needs to be addressed. Jesus, when he was going to the cross, right? This is reading from Isaiah now. Isaiah 53, 7. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he didn't open his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers, shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. I'm sad. When I, when I, I'm surprised I'm not crying now. We know what he went through, right? The abuse, uh, the suffering he took. Now, you know he could have he could have shot it out. He could have said anything. He could have stopped. He could have said something. He didn't say anything. He took it. He took it for us. How many of us, when something is said to us, we feel so quick, we have to respond. We have to. Somebody says something and we quit to respond. If you have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Blessings and curses shouldn't come out the same mouth. But so, and I say it to myself because, you know, I'm guilty of it. I'm not, I'm not saved from this. But that's what this whole message is about, is that this is the mouth that God gives us. This is his breath. So why are we using it for this and then this? You know, the first statement from the, his first statement from the cross was like a prayer, right? It says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He was blessing us. He's like, he could have, he from the cross, he could have blasted them. He could have did whatever. The first thing came out of his mouth, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Proverbs 6. 16 through 19, right? It says, These 16 the Lord hates. Yes, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. You see, there's three things here alone that deal with the mouth, that deals with the tongue. It's important. Jesus don't like these things. God does not like these things. There's a reason. Ephesians, right? Ephesians 6.12. Um, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. It's not against you or you or that brother. It's not against us. It's not the flesh. It's the enemy who's behind that, causing your strife, causing your commotion. He wants that strife. He wants that. It's not, listen, we can't fight the enemy. Not physically. We can't do anything, we well, have to understand he's there trying to knock us out, trying to take us down. So when you see somebody, oh, he hates me, he doesn't like, it's not about him. It's not him. It's the, it's the spirit that's behind him, that's influencing him, that's whatever. It's not him. We can't, we can't, we have to stop looking at these people because it ain't him. The devil hates you. I don't care who you, he hates you. He hates me, he hates us. Zechariah 4, 6, right? Everybody knows this verse. He says, so he answered to me and says, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by my, it's not by might nor by my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Right? What power? What spirit? This is God's spirit. This is God's power. We have no power. We have no authority. I can't speak anything that God doesn't tell me to speak. This is God. It's all about God. It has to be about God. That's, his, that's, what the, that's when the power comes. When you speak God's word, that's when the power comes. Not what you think, what you feel, what you want. No, it's 
God's power. It's not by power. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much riches. I don't have what you. I don't care what you have. That's not power. See, people think that's power. People see riches and cars and all these. Oh, you know, I'm a powerful man because I have this and that's not power. God's spirit in you. That's it. Right? They say, they said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right? Is inside of us. It's the truth, right? Another, another quote by Tony Evans. Right? It says, God is not interested in your amen, but in your action. Everybody can say, Amen, amen, brother, amen. What are you doing? Is it your action? Like, right, the book of James is known, right? Be, do, not, do not be hearers, but doers of the word. Listen, we can agree all we want. We can say what we want. Hallelujah. Like Johnny says, right, we got that church thing going down pat. We can say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We can say all those things. But if it doesn't change the way we act, if it's not coming from the heart, it means nothing. Amen. Ephesians 4.29, right? It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. You see where I'm going with this. All these verses are the same thing. I mean, it's just, you see where I'm going. Isaiah 55, 11, right? It says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Right? People always say, God's word won't come back void. That's right. God's word. Not what you say, not what you think, not what you feel, not what you tweet, not what you, whatever you call that, or post, or whatever. That doesn't mean anything. It is God's word. It won't come back void. And I'm saying, it doesn't have to be the Bible. So now you go in the street, and you meet somebody, you bless them, you pray for them. That will stay with that person. That, that, that's, what, that's what counts. It's God's word. It's God's love that shines through you. That's what counts. If it's God's word, it will proceed. It will do what it has to do. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Because it's God's word. His presence, his spirit is upon that. It's God's word. Not my word, not anything that any of us can say. If it ain't God's spirit, it's not anything. Proverbs 13, 3, it says, He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he opens wide his lips shall have destruction. James, right? 1, 19 through 20. So then, my beloved, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. I don't have to explain these things, I hope. I mean, everybody should know what this stuff means. Right? Proverbs 29, 11, A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Proverbs 10, 19, In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Think about what you say. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all the types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. In the church, we need to be light, not darkness. Outside as well, we need to be light, not darkness. They need to see Christ in us. In Matthew 5, verses 11 to 3 to 11, excuse me, known as the Beatitudes, right? I'm going to run through them. It's a lot of them, right? It says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. God blesses those who mourn, they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble. Right? God blesses those who hunger for thirst and justice. God blesses those who are merciful. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. God does a lot of blessing. Our worth doesn't come from what we have or what we don't have. Our value comes from the creator of heaven and earth. I ran across a quote from J. Vernon McGee. It's pretty cool. It says, if a tape recorder recorded everything that you said this past week, and if it was played back before an audience, they would know whether you're a Christian or not. Your tongue tells who you are. David goes on to say in Psalms 39.1, he says, I said to myself, I will watch what I do and not sin. 
And what I say, I will hold my tongue when the ungodly are around me. Psalm 141.3. Take control of what I say, O God, O Lord, and guard my lips. I read this, it says, someone has said it takes a baby two years to learn how to talk and 50 years to keep him, to learn to keep him, keep his mouth shut. <laughs> I agree on that one, right? Say amen for that one, right? James said the tongue is like fire. It could be a cure, it could be, cur- it could be a curse. When it's under control, it's a blessing. When it's out of control, it's a whole other story. It's remarkable to know that with the tongue, one, comes to, one can become the child of God. It's through the tongue, Right? Romans 10, right? Verses um, 9 through 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What Paul is saying is the mouth and heart have to be saying the same thing. They have to be together, right? Because the mouth is going to tell what's in your heart. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Christ isn't on the outside he's inside of you his Holy Spirit dwells in us Remember when the apostles were freaking out? God told them, right? He said, Jesus told them, he says, I'm going to leave, and they're freaking out. Where are you going to go? And they, What's going to happen to us? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to prepare. You know the story. I'm going to prepare. He tells them. He goes, he goes and tells them, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Say, well, I'm going. You will be there also. He tells them, right? He has a mansion. And he's preparing their rooms. I love that. I love to think about that. I always say in my own personal prayers, I say, Lord, I don't need a mansion. I don't need a room. Just give me a little spot under the, under the steps somewhere. As long as I'm up there with you, I'm happy. I, I don't need nothing fancy. I don't have nothing fancy now. And I know I, I've heard pastors and I've heard other denominations talk about that. Oh, I got a mansion waiting for me. I'm like, yeah, you got to read into the text. It doesn't say you have a whole. You know, he's going to prepare a place for you. Do you deserve a mansion? I don't, maybe you do. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. I know I don't deserve anything. Like I said, if God gives me a, a, a sleeper, a, a sleeper, a sleeper camp, a sleeping bag, and tells me, here you go, be glad you're here. I was like, yes, Lord. I'm happy that I'm here. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand. People, people think that they deserve more than they deserve. That's the problem. That's the, as they say, the stinking thinking of society today that to make you believe you, that you're worth more than you are. I'm not saying you're worthless, but in, in Christ, you're, you're, you're righteous. He sees you as righteous. He gave his son to die for you, so you mean a lot to him. So it's not what you have. It's what God has given you. Romans 8, verse 31, he says, What then shall I say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What things? What, 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 what things? Paul, what, what are you talking about, Paul? God's everlasting love. God's promises, right? Like the song says, right? God's promises, right? Talk about promises. What, what the song said, right? The song is saying, Great is your faithfulness to me. I don't deserve anything. God is faithful to me. I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm not. It's God's faithfulness to me, to you, to you, to you. Why? Because he loves us. That's a real love right there, right? That's not, the, that's not the love, like, the, like Johnny said, that Barney type of love. I love you, love me. It's not that. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real love. Because you have to understand, what he did on that cross, 
he did before he did before he was born, before like Jeremiah said, before you were even born, right? And you in your mother's womb. I was reading that the other day and I thought about it and I was like, wow. And I was talking to my mother earlier in the day too, and I was thinking about it, and I said, wow. So before I was in my mother, before my mother was my mother, before my, God knew her, he knew me, and he loved me. He, he saw the bad things I did then, and he saw the things I still do today. I'm not perfect. I do things, and he still loves me, though. Would God of now, if God could say, wait a minute, I know what you're going to do next week. I'm going to stop, and I'm going to turn around, and I'm not going to do it. No, 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 no. You got to understand, it's, it's, all this is, see, what we're living out every day, he's already seen this. This is past. It's like a book closed. Like this, in God's time, like this, is, this is your life. This is already closed. He knows from beginning to end. We don't know what's going to happen, but he knows what's going to happen. We have to rely on his word. We have to have faith in what he tells us. God's promises, right? His covenant, like it says, when I was talking about in the beginning, God's covenant, his promises are faithful and true. Right? Great is your faithfulness to me, Lord God. Your promises and your faithfulness is true. John 3.16, right? Everybody knows it, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, those of us who don't know Christ, you don't understand the great faithfulness, you don't understand blessings and cursings, all this stuff is, you say, what is he talking about? It's confusing. He's talking about a rap song? What is he talking about? If you don't know God, of course you can't understand. But God, understand this, right? God gave his son for us. He died for us because he loved us. And with this same mouth that you bless people, God bless you, my brother. As soon as you get outside, you get on the road, you're driving, somebody cuts you off, you're cursing them out. I remember the past. You know what you do, right? This, I've done this in the past. I don't, I don't do it no more. I don't drive as much no more. Can't see too good. My knees don't work right. I let my wife do it now. But I remember the past. It's funny. I remember driving and um, somebody, you know, cursing me out. And I used to return the curse. Hey, forget you, you know. But then I put you in a bad mood. You should notice that you, when you do that, it puts you in a bad mood. So now when you do get somewhere and you get to see somebody, you're like, mm. you, you're mad now because you, you got that anger inside of you now, you know? That guy cut me off. He cut you off two hours ago. But you still got that rage. Would you believe what he did to me back two hours ago? But he, he stays in you. That's that. So you don't need that type of thing inside of you. But I, remember, I, I used to exchange hand signals, if you know what I mean. Outside the window, I used to exchange hand signals. The guy would drop by and I used to be like, you know, exchange, I used to exchange hand signals with the man. And he'll cut me off. And, but then, you know, eventually God worked on my heart. I would pray. He said, Lord, this is not good. And I remember this verse. This verse stuck with me. This, this verse has been on my heart for a long time. But like, wow, I come to church and I say, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And I mean it. But when I go outside and somebody gets my nerve, I'm not saying God bless you to them. I'm doing that cursing thing. Now, if I'm not saying the bad F words no more, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying any of those bad words no more, thank God. But I do thank them. I'm coming, man, I hope you crash into that tree. <laughs> That's not good. See, now what I say, I say, vaya con Dios, right? I say, Godspeed, right? Go ahead, man, because you got a family at home too. You may be an idiot, but your family don't deserve to be going to no funeral or to, you know, they don't deserve that. You have a mother at home, you have a father at home, you might have kids at home. And even though they don't know how you drive in the street, you don't deserve for me to put curses on you. God teaches, though, don't do that. So now I want to check it out. So what I'm going back to is that I remember doing this. It's crazy. Try this one day. Tell me. So now the, somebody goes and curses you out. This is what I did one day. The guy, you know, cursing me out. And I'm like, uh-huh. And I'm just driving. He comes by. You know how they drive by real slow and they look in the car. They, they want to they wanna really let you have it. You just look at him. I say, God bless you, my brother. Jesus loves you. And I remember doing that. That guy almost crashed. The guy was driving on the highway, and he almost crashed with the divider. You could see he was like, what, what? Because he's waiting. He's waiting for that, that word, and I ain't give it to him. I, I gave him that love. 
I gave him my love. And like Johnny said, right, don't be one of those people that have those stickers in your car like, Jesus loves you. And don't be, don't be having your sticker and you're driving like an idiot. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. That's not, that's not good luck. Because I've seen, I've seen people with them stickers on their car. Jesus loves you. And I'm like, oh, look, look, baby, that's, that's, a, that's a Christian. And they drive by and they're like, Meh. and they, 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 listen, no, no, don't, don't do that. I know it's a sticker, but still, don't, don't do that. The world is already confused. Don't confuse them anymore. But do that. I'm telling you, try that one time. I don't care if you get on the train, somebody curses you out. God bless you, brother. Jesus loves you. And I mean, say it from the other season, sincerity. Don't, don't say it to say it to see what happens. No, say, you know, ask God to put something good in your heart. They're not to bless, but to curse. I mean, not, you know, you don't mean, say, huh? You know what I mean. Don't curse. Now I'm getting confused now. I'm hot. But yeah, like I was saying, so I have the same mouth, right? So I have the same mouth that um, blessings and curses come out. But with this mouth, we could do different things, right? We can, um, we can say good things, you know. I said it earlier, Romans um, 10, 9, right? It said that you can confess with your mouth that the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart. By raising for the dead, you will be saved. Repent. You to repent. Yeah, so much I can say, you know, but I don't want to run the time up. I'm going to call the worship team up, but I want to call them up individually. I'm going to do something a little different real quick. I want to call up Shanette. I'm doing this for a reason. I know it's kind of weird, but I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done like five minutes, but hope you understand. I just, my purpose was just to, not just to throw random scriptures out, but to show you, just to show you. There's blessings in the Bible, but the blessings is from you following Christ. There's also curses. There's also curses from you not following Christ. And it says, you, it gives you that breath. Don't, don't misuse it, what God has given you. Elizabeth, when you're ready. Diane. Justin. Now I'm going to mention the people that are not on this stage who do worship. I'm going to mention Jeremy and Rose and George and Luke and Andy. This is the worship team, guys. They use their breath. They use their words to bless God. Amen. Now, for those of you who just started coming, we don't know. We didn't have a worship This worship team is new. It's new. We used to use an iPod, but we did it unto God. We played the songs. We sung to God as if we had a band up here. It didn't make a difference. We worshiped God. We used to have videos with lyrics on them. I used to make them. And we worship God. But now we have a worship team. Angelo, of course, you know, you can come up here, brother. You know, I'm sorry, you know, it's not like I forgot about you, you know, I'm just waiting, just watching you. <laughs> but um, this is our worship team. And they, 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 they sing to the Lord, unto the Lord. You guys join them, and they use their breath and they're blessing God. They're choosing to bless God. And lastly, we got my man Emmanuel. Come on up, brother. In the song, I don't know now, I forgot the order they sung it in. There's a song they sung called Great Are You, Lord. And in that song, the chorus goes, the verse goes, the chorus goes, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out, your, we pour out our praise. That's in the Bible, so you know. Let me just read that verse to you really quick. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, right? It says, that Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. 
God's breath. That same breath that allows you to wake up in the morning, that same breath that allows you to talk or to curse or bless, is that same breath that God breathed into your lungs all the way back in Genesis 2, verse 7. When God removes this breath, we return to dust, right? Ashes to ashes, right? Came from the ground, we were nothing, right? God decided to breathe his breath. So those who say, I have nothing, I have, listen, in the morning when you wake up, you have breath in your lungs and you have to thank God. If you don't know God, know that you're alive. Know that you're alive and that you don't go by breath. You don't go go all green. You don't do these things. This is something God has chosen to do. What you do with it is on you. They choose to worship. I choose to, to praise God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this night, O oh Lord God. Thank you for allowing me to share what you put upon my heart, Lord God. I just pray, Lord God, that your word was heard, that we will be hearers and not just doers, you know. That we will work it out, Lord God. That we will not take the breath that you bless us with, Lord God, and misuse it. That we take it and use it for good to edify people, to encourage people, to lift them up, O oh Lord God, to pray, O oh Lord God. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for all that you provide and all that you give us, O oh Lord God. Not only this day, but every day. Today, yesterday, and tomorrow, oh Lord God. Thank you for your word. It is mighty, O oh Lord God. I stood upon your word, and I will stand upon your word, the rock. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us, O oh Lord God in order that you continue to do in and throughout our lives, O oh Lord God. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I remember, we can pray. We can pray. We can bless. But what we need to do is praise the Lord. Thank you for listening to God's word with us. Thank you for worshiping with us. And remember to bless. Don't curse. See you all Sunday. God bless you.